Hey there, Teddy Rubskin here. And, uh, you know, ever since I did a video about the Genesis 32X, you know, where I fucking plugged that up to my fucking Sega Genesis. Let's see if we get that to work. Yeah, oh, come on. Oh, oh nice. I had people fucking asking me about the fucking Sega CD, you know, hooked up to the fucking Sega Genesis. Personally, I think the fucking Genesis is just fine all by itself. You don't fucking need to plug anything to it, you know what I mean? You know, it's slim and trim. Aero fucking dynamic, you know what I mean? It's great. But, uh, you know, I mean, it's plugging a CD player into the side of it, though. Wasn't really a bad idea back in the 90s. Not really. Actually, everybody was doing it. You know, th there was a CD player that plugged into the Turbo Graphic 16. There was a CD player that plugged into the fucking Atari Jaguar. And even the Super Nintendo was thinking about plugging a CD player in there. Actually, they, they were a lot further along in the development of a CD player for the Super Nintendo than anybody really knew, you know? But we'll get to that. First, let's talk about the fucking Sega CD, right? Which uh, actually had back in the day. You know, got it for fucking Christmas. My mama and papa bear got it for me, and uh, I was pretty fucking excited to fucking pop some CDs into my Sega Genesis. Hell yeah. And the system actually came with the uh, Sewer Shark, which, uh, it's not a bad game. Actually, it's pretty fucking cool, you know? Well, one of the better games that uses fucking full motion video as a gameplay element, you know? You just, like, watch these parts where, like, this military guy's, like, barking orders at you, yelling at you, calling you dog meat. Dog meat! Yeah. Don't feel fucking special, though. He calls everybody dog meat, you know? Maybe you're good enough dog meat. Let's find out. Yeah, and you're flying around in this fucking spaceship through these sewer tunnels, you know? Like the title, Sewer Shark. You're flying around through sewer tunnels, which are uh, kind of like the tunnels from the end of Return of the Jedi, you know? It kind of combines elements of aliens and uh, Return of the Jedi. It's actually not bad. The production design is pretty damn good, and uh, this actor, he's not bad. Pretend it's a game. Maybe it'll even be fun. Shut that dude's dog meat! Barking orders at you. Don't call him your dog meat. Shit. And it was actually pretty playable. Like, you know, pretty much just shoot down these tubes and shoot at weird shit that's crawling on the walls and stuff. Stuff. Right. Because most of the time, these fucking stupid Sega CD games with fucking full motion video, <coughs> yeah, they usually fucking suck ass. Like fucking Night Trap, a double switch, where you're supposed to be watching like security cameras and stuff's going on or something. <clears throat> where these other games where you fucking, you're supposed to make the character move around, actually interact with the video itself, you know. It don't work. It don't really fucking work. You know, Dragon Slayer was one of the few games, you know, that actually did work. You know, it was a classic arcade machine. Dragon Slayer. Fucking love that. In fact, I remember, I was thinking the Dragon Slayer was a game that could never fucking work on the home system, but there it is. It's kind of grainy, but, you know, fucking works. Yeah. I, I played a bunch of games on the Sega CD, but never bought any, you know. Rented them at the video store, but never decided to get any. So really, Sewer Shark was one of the only games I had for the Sega CD, you know. I wasn't a big fan of Sonic CD either, you know. It, it was like Sonic the Hedgehog, but uh, not as good. Actually, it's not as good as Sonic, or Sonic 2, or Sonic 3. In, fa in fact, it's not really included in the trilogy, you know. It's not included in Sonic's Ultimate Genesis Collection. It's kind of hard to find Sonic CD, actually. Except on the original Sega CD, you know. But, but if you like Sonic CD, which I don't, I don't really like it very much. But if you, if you do, I guess that's a reason to get the Sega CD, right? Another reason to get it? If you're a fan of fucking Shining Force. Shining Force 1 and 2 are on the Sega Genesis. But if you want to play Shining Force CD, then you gotta get the Sega CD, right? But, uh, fuck that. I don't like the Sega CD. I used to fucking think the Sega Genesis is fine all by itself. You know? Just fine. And, and, and the fucking TurboGrafx-16 is fine just by itself, too. You don't need the CD player that goes on to that. 
because uh, actually the fucking TurboGrafx-16 was a pretty uh, compact little system. Kind of cute, because it's not really 16-bit, even though it calls itself TurboGrafx-16. It's actually kind of a hybrid 8-bit, 16-bit system. It's got 8-bit and 16-bit chips in there, so... You know, but it's designed to be compact and affordable. In fact, the Japanese version is much smaller, you know? American version is just bigger with the with size. It's just, there's more fucking chips in there. It's just a little bit larger, just mostly plastic, you know? But uh, it, it, they did manage to make it affordable, right? It was half the price the fucking Super Nintendo back in the day. And 50 bucks less than the Sega Genesis, so yeah, it was affordable. And the games were cheap, too. Kind of dug these games, how they came on little cards and stuff, instead of cartridges. Yeah. Actually, I had quite a few friends that had the TurboGrafx-16. But uh, none of them fucking threw down the $400 it cost to get the fucking CD player that went on the back. Fuck that. And the fucking Atari Jaguar also had a CD player. They went on it, and like the Turbo Graphics 16, it never was a very uh, good seller, you know. And I didn't know a lot of kids that had the fucking Jaguar, you know. System kind of sucked, you know. It had a crappy controller that looked like a generation behind, really. Big, great chunk of shit with a keypad on there. What do you need a keypad for? You know, with one of those covers that goes over it so you see what the buttons are. What is that? It's like an idea from the fucking 70s, man. These are the 90s. Get with the program, Atari. What the fuck? And the system didn't even have a dust cover for the cartridge port, right? It was just exposed to the air. So dust could rest on the fucking connectors and shit. Come on. Everybody's got a dust cover for the cartridge port. You know? Everybody. Even this fucking knockoff system, you know? Has two cartridge ports. It's got a dust cover for each of them. So, so fuck. Imagine... You find yourself an Atari uh, Jaguar, right? 64. But, but it's been sitting in a garage for like 10 years with no dust cover in the cartridge port. What, what do you think? There's fucking spiders living in there, man. Who knows? Who knows? But, uh, you know, back in the day, kids were buying it because it was a top-of-the-line fucking system. And it had games like Aliens vs. Predator, which is supposed to be really fucking cool, you know? That's what everybody was saying. You know, it's like Doom, except with aliens and predators, yeah. Right. <laughs> I mean, most of the fucking kids who got the Atari Jaguar got it just to fucking play Aliens vs. Predator, you know what I mean? More or less, they got Aliens vs. Predator and got the Jaguar to play it on, right? You know what I'm saying? Right. And, uh, well, it wasn't really 64-bit. The commercials really said it had two 32-bit processes, and do the math, that equals 64, but do math? Wow, yeah, you know what the kids want these days, don't you, Atari? Hell yeah, fucking kids want to do math, right? Now, there was nothing really wrong with calling it a dual-core 32-bit machine. Still would have been one of the more powerful fucking machines on the market at the time. What the fuck? But, but, but the CD player was almost required. You had to get the fucking CD player for it. Because if you didn't, the fucking system looked like it was missing something, you know? It's like a hole in the top, like, yeah, CD player goes there. You gotta put the fucking CD player there, you know what I mean? Otherwise, fucking missing something. And actually, I think the fucking CD player does have a dust cover for the cartridge port. You know what I'm saying? Shit. Yeah. But you've probably fucking seen the Nerds video about the fucking Jaguar CD. He fucking hated it, you know? He got two of them, and neither of them fucking worked. He said it looked like a fucking toilet, so he shit in it, right? But fucking Taco Man, he fucking likes the Jaguar CD. He's got one that works just fine. Go in there, you son of a bitch. And he played a fucking couple cool games on there, right? Got a link over here where you can see fucking Taco Man playing some pretty cool games that work just fine on the Jaguar CD, you know? But the, th the thing about it is that Jaguar, he has some design flaws, right? I'll let fucking uh, Spoony explain oh via Dr. Insano exactly what the fuck's wrong with the Jaguar CD. It's prone to about five different ways it can fail. It can fail if the CD device isn't perfectly set on the machine. It can fail if the contacts aren't clean. It can fail if the memory track cart isn't perfectly set. And it can easily fail because the laser itself or the motor mechanism are defective, and they often are. And in this case, it would often fail because the lid is so poorly designed that when closed, it actually closes too tightly and mashes the 
CD against the inside of the drive, preventing it from spinning, and that could easily cause additional internal damage. Look, basically, it's a bad idea plugging the thing into the fucking cartridge port, you know? Just speaking from a fucking experience, me hooking the fucking Genesis 32X up to the fucking Genesis is just fucking... Hooking it up to the fucking cartridge port is fucking stupid. Just doesn't work right. Fuck that. This abomination is a piece of crap! Don't really even need the fucking CD fucking attachments, really? You know what I mean? I mean, the Super Nintendo was gonna have a fucking CD player that hooked up to it, you know? Sony was designing it. Sony had already designed the sound chips that went into the fucking Super Nintendo. It's a reason that it sounds so fucking good, right? And Sony was designing the fucking CD, like, expansion thing that was gonna, you know, go on the bottom and fucking do some shit. Fucking, uh, deal fell apart. Apparently because fucking Nintendo was also working with fucking Philips Electronics on another fucking CD system. The Compact Disc Interactive, you know? And Sony was offended by that. Like, well, what are you doing working with one of our competitors? That's fucked up. What if Sony just decided to work with Sega on their CD system, huh? Can't fucking do that. Sony didn't put out a CD system for them. Instead, they put out their fucking CD system as the PlayStation, right? So, so really, the PlayStation was going to be the CD player for the Super Nintendo, right? In fact, the controller for the PlayStation is very similar to the Super Nintendo controller, you know? Got the same fucking button layouts. Same fucking start and select buttons. You know what I mean? They're, they're very fucking similar. Actually, with the PlayStation controller, the very basic PlayStation controller, add the two dual analog sticks on there, and there you go. That's the fucking controller that they're still using to this fucking day. Really, the fucking PlayStation has got to be the most successful CD add-on of all time, right? Even though it didn't uh, really add on to the Super Nintendo. You know, didn't do it. But, uh, yeah. I mean, but the, I mean, it's a fucking point. Well, why does the CD system need to add on? I mean, this is fucking Sega CD hooks up to the fucking Sega Genesis, but then you just put the CDs in the CD player. Why can't it just work by itself? Why you gotta hook the Sega Genesis up to it? I mean, they did fucking put out a fucking compact Sega Genesis and Sega CD together called the CDX. You know, that was uh, smaller and kind of pretty cool, you know? Actually, you could hook a 32X up to the CDX, and what the fuck is that? I mean, look at that. You gotta plug the cord that goes into the fucking side of the fucking thing. From the that is just a ridiculous looking thing. I mean, what is that? Are you kidding me? Shit. No. The, the best CD add-on of all time is actually the Super Nintendo CD, which became the fucking Sony PlayStation. There you go. Because really, CDs were the future. You know, it was a good idea to put a CD system on the fucking thing. But it should have been a freestanding thing, which is what Sony did. You know what I mean? Actually, that's a good segue to talk about a fucking PlayStation game. Next time, I'm going to talk about a PlayStation game. Yeah! Until then, keep it real. Down there, suck them.